Hello everyone, this is Colin once again. I'm making this video because I've received a number of comments and private messages not only on my YouTube channel but also on my blog because in my, pa in my last video I asked if um, I linked a blog article that I wrote um, regarding you know sort of where I stand theologically at this point and uh, some people have responded um, comment you know, have put comments on that blog and so far I want and I want to say even if you don't agree not that I'm trying to convince anyone but even if you don't agree with the stuff that I'm saying what I do appreciate is that everybody has um, essentially uh, the majority of people have given me very constructive comments in private messages and if I haven't responded to your private message or to your comments directly I do apologize um, I'm very busy right now uh, as I mentioned in my last video, and I've received a number of private messages and comments, and some of them I just haven't been able to respond to them individually. So if I don't get to you right away, that's the, it's not because I don't read the private messages or read the comments. It's just I just haven't had time to respond. So in this video, I'm going to respond to a few people's comments um, because I think that it's pertinent for the ongoing discussion. Um, I mentioned that I was going to be reading the books of Jeffrey Lang. Uh, who's an American uh, convert to Islam, and uh, I was also going to be reading the, uh, all the books by Michael Muhammad Knight because I now own all of his books, and um, also the works of Muhammad Assad. I have a number. I've read a number of his books, but I plan on reading his full translation, the message of the Quran, and probably making some videos about um, my my thoughts regarding. Um, his commentary on the Quran. Now, um, the reason why I mentioned Jeffrey Lang is because the title of his third book, and I've read all three of his books, he's only written, uh, he has only produced three, is Losing My Religion, A Call for Help. Um, a, very, a very good book. I mean, he basically talks about being an American convert to Islam and the unique, the unique position that one has as being a convert to Islam, so this I can relate to. Uh, he talks about, I keep looking over there because the book's right there um, on my shelf, but um, he talks about criticism of Hadith, he talks about um, the evaluation of certain orthodox dogmas that are dogmas or doctrines that are now considered to be part of orthodox Islam and the evolution of these doctrines and he offers some alternative views about literalism, about symbolism of the Quran, about um, you know, whether we are obligated to accept all of these orthodox doctrines, such as predestination, uh, without question, uh, things like this. And um, he also talks about um, the various uh, theological schools of thought that have existed, the Multazlia, um, the, the different philosophers. Um, he mentions um, orthodox and non-orthodox critique and criticism of Hadith uh, collection and reporting and authenticity. He talks about uh, non-Muslim perspectives on Hadith, and he tries to find a middle ground, which I think his general message of, you know, essentially uh, being very critical of each Hadith as far as, um, you know, are, is there any, critici any legit criticism of any uh, quote-unquote Sahih Hadiths, which, which in reading his book and reading other um, scholars' works, uh, I'm finding that a number of Hadiths have been uh, under scrutiny even ones that are in Sahih Bukhari and Sahih Muslim. He, his personal view is that if the Hadith seems to contradict the message of the Quran, that it probably is not authentic, um, or, and, and, and one could argue that it is a product of projecting back to the Prophet um, or a product of a specific time period. And, um, and 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 whatnot. So very very healthy criticism. Again, I, I we could I could make a video just elaborating on one of the points I just mentioned. I recommend all three of his books. He's a very honest individual. I, I really responded to his books because I can relate to what he's talking about in his books. As far as you have to be honest with yourself, you have to investigate. You if you're in doubt about certain things, you have to you know follow it to its natural conclusion, whatever that conclusion might be. Um. And so I, I actually feel um, strengthened by reading um, his his books, um, and so I'm hoping that when I read Muhammad Assad and and and, uh, and Michael Muhammad Knight, that it will also um, prove to be a strengthening uh, of, of faith. Um, 
you know, again, as I've mentioned in my previous videos, uh, the foundation of Orthodox Sunni Islam is no longer a foundation that I feel that I can firmly stand on. But as a as a um, a Muslim who is looking into more modern views uh, and perspectives and looking at the works of like Jeffrey Lang, Muhammad Assad, uh, sort of individuals who are drawing upon uh, more of the um, Al-Andalus perspective of Islam, if you will, as I've been mentioning, like uh, Averos and Ibn Hazm and and Ibn Arabi and things like this. So anyway, I didn't want to make a, a whole other video rehashing things I've said in the past, but this is just sort of the thoughts I was having when I concluded Jeffrey Lang's books. And I may talk more about some of the things he brings up in, in, in his volumes in future videos or blog posts. Anyway, the real reason why... Uh, that was basically a prologue, but the reason why I'm making this video is, again, some of the comments that have been left on my blog, and I want to respond, because one of the things that Jeffrey Lang does not discuss in his books, um, at least um, not in the way... In, he basically analyzes, especially in the third book, the Hadiths, and the science of Hadith, and he brings up a lot of valid points and very interesting perspectives. When it comes to the Quran, though, he, he in, actual, in the actual historicity, of the origin narrative of Islam, um, he doesn't touch that at all, really. He, he takes it all very much for granted. I mean, uh, again, if you're going to be critical of the Hadiths and some of the Sira traditions, then obviously we have to be a little skeptical or perhaps have to admit that perhaps we don't have the full story and the full details of the historicity of certain events, right? Uh, if we're going to use... Um, authentic historical methodology we have to be open to that idea and he doesn't seem to reject that but what i mean is the stuff that was brought up by tom holland in his documentary islam the untold story now i can't accuse jeffrey lang of not talking about the stuff that tom holland talks about because jeffrey lang wrote his books books during like well the first two during the early 90s or mid 90s and then 2004 for losing my religion his third and final book as far as i can tell unless he decides to write a, a fourth book um but a lot of this material was being discussed as far as um you know tom holland postulates that perhaps it was uh, islam did not emerge out of the arabian peninsula as a full crystallized religion but rather it was just like judaism and christianity which is it took several generations for the islam at least the sunni form of islam that we understand today to crystallize um, and not the other way around. Um, I find that a lot of that material was being discussed and published while Jeffrey Lang was writing his books or during the time. And so perhaps he didn't pursue that area. Um, but nonetheless, I, I find that um, when I finished his books, a lot of things that I had been questioning, such as, you know, looking at things symbolically um, and not necessarily literally as far as scripture, looking at hadiths a certain way, a lot of the was material that I had been questioning and pondering and, one, and wondering if I could ever find a foundation for any of that. And by reading Jeffrey Lang's books, I find that a lot of the stuff he talks about, I have found what the beginning, at least, of certain foundations to stand on theologically. However, when I finished the books, I found that this whole question of the historicity of the origin narrative, the evolution of Islam as a religion, wasn't discussed very much in his books. He talks about the progression of certain doctrines, but not the overall arch, you know, arcing organized religion in its history. So, I still think that the things that Tom Holland brings up in his documentary Islam the Untold Story are things that Muslims and non-Muslims together, without hostility, uh, but in a spirit of academic scholarly discourse, should investigate. We should be asking the questions that Tom Holland is asking, and we need to investigate and pursue them openly. Um, and I mentioned Tom Holland, and I linked Tom Holland in my recent video and my blog post. And what I found, uh, a few people mentioned what I think were um, potential, quote, refutations to um, Tom Holland. Um, for an example, twice was linked to me in the comment section of my blog, the article written by Avroz Zadi Jivraj, and I'm sure I'm, I'm sure I butchered 
um, this individual's name, uh, a, a critical examination of C4's Islamic Untold story. I've read that article. I'd read that article before it was uh, linked to me, and then also a link to a response to Channel 4's Islamic Untold story by Aira, which, funny enough, I had also read that article after I watched Islamic Untold story. Um, and that was linked to me a, a couple of times. I was also then linked to uh, Islamic Awareness's uh, article about the history of Islam, inscriptions, etc., etc., and I've read that article as well. Now, uh, I mention this because these articles have been linked to me multiple times ever since I posted Tom Holland's documentary. And I mention these articles not because I'm dismissing them outright, but saying that I've read them, and I considered their points. Now, n I don't want to accuse anyone who's linked me these links of trying to not perhaps tell me the full story and what I mean by that is in discussions like this we are going to have for example we're going to have Tom Holland's documentary right and then we're going to have people who don't agree with Tom Holland and are going to produce works saying trying to poke holes in his um in his documentary and so for example people have done uh, character critiques of him which could be considered ad hominem fa fallacy, saying that he's not an expert, he's not an academic, um, and somehow that that refutes everything that he's said in his documentary. I know that one of the articles stated that um, that he did not use Islamic sources, or he neglected Islamic sources, um, and I think, I mean, I'm not Tom Holland, but I know after reading his book that's not entirely true. He does reference a number of Islamic sources. In the documentary, though, the point he's trying to make is that when he went to go start the research for his book, he was struck by the lack, the sort of black hole he refers to it, this void of Muslim sources dating to the 7th century. Right. Uh, and so, and, and he says, you know, because the Hadiths and the Sira literature, these were not written down until several generations after the fact. And nothing's really preser preserved except for non-Arab sources uh, dating, or at least non-Muslim Arab sources dating to the first century. So that's really all we have to work with. And that's his point, right? So it's not that I don't think he neglected them, it's just that if he were to suddenly drag in the Islamic sources, meaning the Hadiths, the Sirah, suddenly the documentary would have been he would have had to have basically explained that the science of Hadith, the, 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 the Sira literature, and, you know, the dating of these documents, and the whole, basically everything that Jeffrey Lang talks about in his book. Um, and perhaps Tom Holland will do a sequel, or someone will come along and perhaps do, put maybe Jeffrey Lang's words to a documentary, and talk about um, the Muslim and non-Muslim approach to the Sira and Hadith literature. I think that that would be a fascinating discussion. Um, but I think to accuse Tom Holland of utterly ignoring uh, Islamic sources is, is disingenuous. I, I don't agree with it. I think that it misses the point of his documentary. I think that if you watch his documentary, he's being very honest about his search for the historicity of the origin narrative uh, of Islam. And I think that a lot of the material presented or just asking that question was something that not a lot of people have done. We, I know I personally took the Hadith and Sira literature very much for granted and never really questioned when they were collected and what is the whole process of the science of Hadith and how reliable are, are certain collections and certain Hadiths and is there criticism from Muslims and non-Muslims? I, I didn't know any of this stuff and I was very naive about the subject. Um, so... Anyway, but one thing I want to point out is even if we disagree with Tom Holland, and that was sort of my response to the one article, the other two articles, the Aira and the Islamic Awareness article, one thing that I don't know if the people who linked me to those articles are aware of is that Stop Spamming, one, the user here on YouTube, has done a thorough re refutation to not only the Aira article that was linked to me, but also the Islamic Awareness article as well. Uh, and so, you know, it's... It's like, okay, I read, I read those articles. I'm glad people are linking those articles. I'm glad people are critiquing Tom Holland's documentary. Again, I think everything should be critiqued and investigated. But there's more to the story. There are people who have responded to the IER article and to uh, the Islamic Awareness article and, in my opinion, have done a very thorough job of pointing out the flaws in those articles. So I will link Stop Spamming's videos. There are three of them, I think in the more info section to this video.
because I think that his videos don't, you know, they need to be watched. Now, granted, we have to keep in mind that stop spamming and myself, and no doubt many of you watching my videos will not disagree, or excuse me, huh, will disagree with some of the statements made by Stop Spamming. We have to respect the fact that Stop Spamming is coming from a particular worldview, i.e. he's an atheist. And obviously, you know, his perspectives and some of the things he says in his videos are not things that I personally agree with, nor will many of you agree with. But getting, but then there are things that I say in my videos that <laughs> maybe many of you don't agree with. So we have to be honest about that. We have to be upfront with our biases. But objectively speaking, Looking at the things that Stop Spamming says about Ayer's video or uh, article, an Islamic Awareness's article, they're valid. So I really, they deserve to be watched and considered. Because like I said, this particular topic about the historicity of the narrative of Islam, the origin narrative, and also um, the evolution of the religion, and you know what does the Quran talk about, and what can we say for certain the Quran is talking about, and what are things that because of the hadith literature which again people are you know we, we you know perhaps should be critical of without the hadith literature how do we know some of the things the quran is talking about and is it a forced interpretation of what the quran is talking about is there are there alternative views to what the quran is talking about historically speaking so these are important questions i mean i i this is like the points raised by tom holland these are very important points as i said and i think we should not shy away from them. But but because we shouldn't shy away from them, we also have to educate ourselves. Jeffrey Lang says in, at the end of his book that the most important topics of conversation that will occur, and he, again, he wrote this in 2004, is that we must arm ourselves with knowledge, right? We have to understand the various perspectives, and we shouldn't just say, oh, well, they're Orientalists, or oh, well, this is these are non-Muslim religious scholars or non-Muslim historians. We need to look at all perspectives. This is what Jeffrey Lang does for the Hadith, the question of the Hadiths. And I think that he has set a great example for our exploration into what Tom Holland talks about in his documentary. And Muslims and non-Muslims need to be on board for these type of discussions. And it doesn't help the conversation just to say, well, Tom Holland's not, you know, uh, a legit, you know, historian or whatever. The fact of the matter is, when you look at Tom Holland's material, he gives so much credit and emphasis to other historians, like legit historians and Islamic studies scholars, Muslim and non-Muslim, right? So one could argue that if you were to read the works of like Patricia Crone and Michael Cook and another a number of other individuals, Tom Holland is essentially bringing into our current time topics that have been discussed in the past but really haven't been considered by a vast majority of people. So now that a documentary is able to be created and then produced and seen by anyone because it's posted on the internet, we can all sort of collaborate and talk about these various subjects. So uh, one more thing in the spirit of consideration, one more thing is the last comment on my blog. Again, there was the link to the IERA post. Uh, the person said that it gives the, the the link gives a sufficient and logical response to the imagination of Holland and Crone. And again, I don't know what this individual means. The imagination of Holland and Crone. Uh, I don't think that they were. I don't know whether that's an insult or not. But are, are they imaginative? Is this person saying they're they're imagining their findings, or their references, or are they uh, using their imagination to think outside the box? Not really sure. Um, and uh, let's see here. Um, the person says, please let, please let us know what you think of, the, of this link. Well, I basically have. I think Stop Spamming has done a very thorough job of refuting, or at least calling into question many of the points that Ayura made. Um, and then the person then says, the fact that Muwaya does not mention Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, is not surprising. Muwaya was the son of Abu Sufyan, who was an arch enemy of the Prophet. So in other words, this person uh, basically kind of retro retrospectively goes, well, okay, it makes sense why Muwaya and Yazid did not uh, have, um, you know, coins of the Prophet on, on theirs because they were, you know, they, they didn't, their family did not like uh, the family of the prophet and things like this, but the thing is, is that they we know it, it well. It's an interesting theory, but uh, then again, if we were to expand past the the reign of Yazid, the son of Muayyah, what about the other Umayyad uh, caliphs? What about their 
eventual rel religiosity, right? I'm thinking of Abdel Malik, you know, these individuals. Weren't they all related because it was a dynasty? So, or, I just I just don't see how that's a very sufficient answer. Um, I would understand if they were not fans of the Prophet's family due to political civil war, right? Because we know that, historically speaking. But why wouldn't they, if, if they converted to Islam, at least as the traditional narrative says, why, what would prevent them from depicting or at least mentioning the Quran or, or, or mentioning Islam as a religion or, or the Prophet? Why being the, of the lineage of Abu, Sufi, Abu, Abu, Abu Sufyan would that, would that prevent them from mentioning the religion? Um, I, I don't see that. Um, I, I find that hard to believe. Um, especially since suddenly they have several, a few, a few rulers later, you've got someone building the Dome of the Rock. You know, and things like this. So, yeah, I, I think it's an interesting theory, but one that I don't see a lot of um, substantial evidence for um, to back up the claim. So again, I really think, for those of you who have not seen Tom Holland's documentary, I would recommend it. Again, keep in mind when you're watching it, and I'm not trying to downplay downplay Tom Holland, but I think he would agree that he is basically riding on the shoulders of several individuals, Muslim and non-Muslim, who have looked into the historicity of these things. And I think that we cannot easily ignore the, the implications of his questions, but rather to be consistent and to be honest with ourselves. And I and, and really, I don't mean to be preachy. I mean, for all, if if. You, if those of you watching this have basically decided Tom Holland's a, 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 you know, a dumb or an idiot and you're done with him, by all means, just ignore everything I'm saying in this video. But I personally, since I have stated, I'm now not in the mood to convince others. I, I'm basically vlogging and talking in my own perspective and encouraging, maybe throwing out some words of encouragement, but by no means does anybody have to agree with me. For me personally, the, the, the question of historicity and what we can know, these were things that I was asking about the Bible when I started questioning Christianity and started looking at alternatives within Christian theology. And so, for those of you who have been watching my videos for some time, those of you who talked to me online for the past several years, you all know that. So for me, I have to be consistent. I have to look at these things. And I have to question them and investigate. Or else I'm a hypocrite, right? Right? And don't want to be a hypocrite. So, anyway, sorry for the ramble, if it sounded like a ramble. But my point is, is, I really think we should give these things a fair chance and really investigate. Because, hey, we if we ask these really tough questions and then we find the answer, whatever the answer might be, if it's possible, we'll all benefit from it. Those of you who are the most staunch Orthodox Sunni Muslim or Orthodox Shia Muslim, down to the most questioning you know, Muslim across the spectrum to the person who absolutely hates Islam, across to the person who's very neutral about Islam, we all will benefit from the answers one way or another because we'll all be on the same page with this particular set of questions and answers and the knowledge gathered from them. So with that, I leave us in the spirit of a, you know, online community, also a, a real life, or well, this is real life, but you know what I mean, online, offline communities, respectively to um, really think about these questions in the spirit of knowledge and seeking that knowledge. So thank you all for watching. Assalamu alaikum rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. May the peace and blessings of Almighty God be with you all. Peace.